Nayatika, welcome. Mm -hmm. um, social housing, housing the social. Um, what does this uh, mean uh, for you and your practice, this notion? Mm. Um, that's a good question uh, and I immediately think of my youth and how I was brought up in Slovenia which was part of ex-Yugoslavia. So uh, social housing was something that was very familiar for me and it was something which was natural. Uh, however, uh, like uh, basically uh, the rest of the world um, or a lot of the world is not uh, thinking in terms of social housing. And uh, I find it inspiring to see uh, that, uh, for instance, uh, I can get inspired by the informal city of Caracas and uh, to analyze how things are done there. And also, for instance, to think about uh, how a community in a depressed neighborhood of Amsterdam uh, wants to live together and to learn from them. So I, I think this material is a good step uh, to think about uh, how people can uh, do uh, how people can make their housing. I mean, everything, every housing should be social housing, but uh, it has been just tainted by, you know, the policy of uh, social housing. You mentioned, uh, you know, having worked in very different contexts, very different uh, national and cultural contexts. Um, do you see a kind of transnational tendency, or do you see instruments mm. and, and situations that, that are universal? Yeah, sure, uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, today, I, I really think that we understand ourselves as one world. And uh, the, you know, like, uh, uh, the challenges, for instance, of the informal city is not something that we can just displace. It's something that we can learn from. And uh, uh, for me, um, uh, it's, very, it's very important uh, to, uh, to learn from uh, the global community and uh, to actually to understand uh, community-based projects or community spaces as places where, as laboratories uh, of, of our, uh, that where, where, when we can learn about our coexistence. Uh, which basically will be a different coexistence where maybe shared space will be more important than public space and maybe self-sustainability will be more important than uh, the idea of sustainability which has been uh, recently tainted by neoliberal development and practices. I think these, these, the bo uh, these issues are, are both very important. And there is uh, another thing which I think is also uh, super important, it's that the rural condition which has been put under the rack of the 20th century, uh, you know, like heap of uh, urban culture, the rural culture is now maybe a catalyst for change uh, in our cities in transition or in our cities in crisis, if you want. Do you and think there's a potential in that uh, yeah. for, for city as yes. well? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, the question is what is the culture? Uh, it's not, uh, it, it actually the question is let's uh, think and think together with people uh, beyond uh, what is architecture. Basically cities are made of citizens. If citizens survive in cities, cities will survive as well. Uh, so it's culture, it's not uh, the form. Uh, but then again, it's, uh, urban, it's rural culture, um, perhaps more than urban culture today, or maybe to put it uh, maybe better, uh, rural, rural culture can inform urban culture today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting you mentioned this notion of culture and form. Uh, your, your role as an artist in this and your practice, uh, I imagine, has to deal very much with both. Can you maybe give an example of how um, you mentioned yeah, that, you, that you learn from these situations that you're in. Maybe give an exa example of how this learning actually translates mm. into form through your practice, specifically yeah. as an artist, but perhaps in the potential of the artist in general. Um, first of all, I'm also an architect, uh, but I basically work as an artist, uh, but of course uh, I have this knowledge which I can't avoid, to put it simply. Uh, for instance, when we were, uh, uh, I didn't think so much about, uh, I, I made an on-site project in Caracas, the informal city of Caracas, 
uh, which is a dry toilet, a toilet that doesn't uh, need any water to operate. But I didn't think so much about uh, organization of a barrier until I worked here in Amsterdam in 2009. And then suddenly it hit me that actually both communities here in Amsterdam that worked on community garden and community kitchen and uh, a barrier situation has many things in common. And uh, first of all, I would say that uh, it was striking for me in Caracas to see that uh, people who lived in informal city came from rural background, but they built the formal city, so they knew modernist architecture firsthand. But they insisted to build the way they built, which is uh, what I call rural architecture. So why? Because it produces uh, village communities where, again, shared space is more important than public space, which more or less is non-existent in a barrio. So this, was, this is, for instance, an, an example. Um, as for the practice, I think it's uh, really important to, to work on community-based projects, and I call them, uh, I think it's uh, very important to do something, not just to talk. And uh, when you do something, you, uh, you have a, what I call a relational object. Uh, where a community uh, can use it as a tool to change their culture of living. So you have to have an object, you have to do something together, and this object is a tool to change the culture of living. And we are back at the culture mm -hmm. now. And uh, can this be a model, or is that always uh, uh particular to the context in which it I takes th place. I think it's very particular to the context. Mm. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, this idea of the rural culture as a potential uh, like a power um, laboratory for our cities today, I think it's uh, really evident. Uh, just think about the popularity of all community gardens in Europe, in Europe or in the USA today. Uh, there is no rational reason that you know th we desire to cultivate uh, food. Of course, there is a rational re reason, uh, but of course, way be beyond uh, cultivating food, uh, the community gardens are also uh, school rooms for uh, political rights. And also, it's a, they are very symbolic uh, spaces where we can reappropriate uh, the city, which became a very distant city, and where public space in many cases is no man's space. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, so, uh, taking this notion of a community based project, huh, so that you have this almost a, a village rural model, whether it takes place in a rural area or in a city, that's mm -hmm. what we can learn from. What kind of uh, parties should or have to be? Uh, present? What kind of collaborations well, must we insist on yeah, to realize this? Yes, uh, uh, well, as you said, uh, it's, uh, it should be collaboration because uh, knowledge needs to be reinvented. So, but basically that, that's nothing new. We just think that it's new now because we talk about it, but uh, like 90% of the world works like this. It's a natural way of doing things. And uh, just now I'm thinking, because I, I talk personally also a lot about it, I talk about participatory design. And uh, for instance, we talk today a lot about participatory democracy. Uh, but uh, anyway, design and democracy should be participatory. The reason why we put this participatory word in front of design or democracy is the fact that, that there is a problem that we, we have to be reminded that it's participatory a project. It's a question of articulation. You know. Um, yeah, if you want, yeah. Mm. That, that's, that, I wonder if that sounds hopeful. Uh, sure, yes. I mean, that's very hopeful. Yes. Yeah. And uh, also, you know, sometimes I'm asked, uh, because in this, uh, first of all, I think that this project, community-based project, are relational objects, as I said before, which are very important uh, for the community uh, to re-articulate their uh, space and also, uh, their existence, if you want. Um, but then uh, they are also, uh, I, I think uh, that uh, they are also, I call them also art projects, mm -hmm. uh, because I believe in the power of art. I believe that uh, art mediates our relationship in the, with the world. And uh, in this project, I understand myself artist as moderator. I have other practices as my art practices, but in this, uh, case, I'm artist as a mediator. Mm. And uh, like any project that would take place in a specific uh, uh, 
social cultural context within a city or in a rural area, um, your work as, uh, would require uh, mediating some kind of system, some kind of institutional system that's there, whether it's political, economic, spatial, etc. Uh, your art practice as well, uh, or perhaps even your practice as, a, as an architect, when brought into an institutional space such as a museum or a gallery space, can you explain a little bit how that, what you mentioned before, your, the learning that you that, that, that's involved in, in your projects, how that translates into this form that's being presented to people. So that's a translation that's not uh, a direct collaboration in actually building something together, designing something mm. together, but providing information. Well, you know, everyone has a different method of uh, how to deal with the reality. Uh, like when I, uh, after or when I work on, on community-based projects, I learn a lot. And then, uh, as I'm also artist and educator, uh, I feel it naturally uh, to talk to others about what I have learned. And one particular example are the drawing series, which are drawing narratives, where I explain a particular uh, problem or, you know, like a um, situation, like a every, basically every community-based project that I'm involved in has some kind of uh, uh, follow-up and uh, what I love are the drawing series. Because? What kind of result do you get? Well, uh, it's, uh, um, we shouldn't forget, uh, you know, like many times, or yeah, this used to be a typical question years ago, uh, should we as artists also exhibit in galleries and museums? And, and I think uh, that museums for me, they're uh, like educational institutions. Uh, so uh, we shouldn't be uh, above them. I think it's very good to participate in the system. I'm not doing institutional critique, uh, but I, what I want to do is to work together with people. And it's very interesting that both um, strategies, institutional critique and uh, like working uh, to do uh, a project have the same goal. It's to change, uh, to change a certain practice or to change a society, it's a potential to change a society. Okay. It's imagining new ways of doing things. Um, but uh, uh, the galleries, you, you know, like, uh, as I said before, it's very simple. People need art. Uh, art is not something which is maybe useful, but uh, we need, you know, like, uh, like a cup of coffee, uh, but uh, we need it uh, for our, uh, to, to mediate the reality we live in. Mm. That brings us to the symposium here. This is a symposium on social housing mm. and housing the social. You could say your example you just gave of the museum institutional space. In, in doing that, they house the social. This symposium is organized through uh, an artistic institution, mm -hmm. SCORE. Um, what do you think, um, who needs to be at the table for, for this symposium? Who needs to hear what's being discussed here? in order to continue uh, a change? Yeah, well, you know, it's the same thing we talked about before. It's sharing the knowledge. Uh, and uh, it's very beautiful. Like yesterday was uh, like amazing for me because there were uh, a lot of different professionals. It was really cross-disciplinary also from all over the world that came to share the knowledge. Uh, I think that's very important specifically on this, uh, this issue. Uh, you know, how, how we want to live together in the future where, let's say, social state will not be so important anymore. Mm -hmm. And you're hopeful about the collaborations that can uh, Well, we, can, we should reinvent uh, how we live together, yeah. And uh, there were a few examples yesterday that actually very clearly showed uh, that uh, the world can be reimagined, but we should uh, just do it and when basically uh, when there is a critical mass, uh, then also it becomes a change of culture in general. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.